It's been said by a popular economist that a person who invests nothing in a precious metals is probably just as insane as the person who has everything invested in precious metals. Now that being said, if I could go back in time when I first started out stacking, what would I buy or do differently? Oh, well, we're going to talk about the mistakes I made and a lot more. So make sure you stay tuned. YouTube, how you doing? Silver and Gold Stack Attack coming at you with another episode. And of course, as always, I hope everyone's doing well. And I'd like to thank you for being here today to check out the new video. I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate the amazing support. And, uh, well, hell, you already know what line comes next. Best damn community on YouTube. Hands down. You guys freaking literally rock. So, anyway, today we're going to talk a little bit about what I would do differently if I was starting over as a new stacker. You pick up a lot in the first few years, that's for sure. Uh, and I know I made mistakes along the way, as have most of us, I'm sure. But really quickly, let's launch one of the most insidious mail calls I think I've ever gotten. Hang on. Now we're going to knock out this mail call really quickly. But first, all the way from the great northwest, way out, we have Anxious Stacker. Very cool hologram sticker and some 90% swag. Gotta love it. Far too kind, my friend. He says, Silver and Gold Stack Tack. Thanks for the sticker trade, buddy. Stay safe out there and stack on. Your friend, Anxious Stacker. Very cool. Uh, I'll have his link in the description. He puts out some great videos. Go give him a look. Give him some love. Give him a sub. Uh, let's help get him going. Help build his channel. Next up, the most insidious mail call I've ever received. This one had ill intent. <laughs> None other than Constitutional Stacker. A uh, little backstory on that. I sent him a Christmas card, and it was uh, it was a glitter card, and he got pretty much bombed. Went all over him. So he he swore up and down. I think he did the whole cut his hand and let the blood run, saying he was going to get me back at some point. And he did. So in his envelope, <laughs> it was absolutely loaded with this. Pixie dust. Everywhere. I mean, fully loaded. So I got to tell you, uh, Constitutional, this was leaking all the way probably from Oregon to North Carolina. So not only did you get me, but I'd pretty much say you pissed off a bunch of people from coast to coast because it's probably all over their mail as well. <laughs> but he did make up for it. He sent me a really nice, really sharp 64 quarter. And uh, I want to thank you for that. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I'll have his link as well. He's, he's done a great job on his channel. So be sure to give him some love. Link in the description. All right, moving on from the pixie dust. So we all had to start somewhere, right? And I'm pretty sure we can all recall how overwhelming our choices were when we were new to stacking. Uh, I mean, we had to choose from gold or silver, generic or bullion, fractionals, bars, proofs, 90% silver, collectibles. And it's a lot to take in. It really is. Now, I'm sure most of you are like me. You grabbed a few books. You watched a fair share of videos here uh, on YouTube as you were introduced to some of the bigger channels. Now, I rarely watch those big channels anymore, but uh, they were cool to start off with as a resource. Uh, I just appreciate the smaller channels when it comes to spending my time here, uh, with the exception of a few. Uh, Salivate Metal, cheers to you, Sal. Still got great stuff going. Appreciate you. But the first thing when we start off, we need to know, we need to establish the why as to why we're buying precious metals. Uh, because sometimes our earliest buys were far too impulsive. Now, when I was a kid, my dad used to yell at me that my eyes were bigger than my stomach at cookouts because uh, I'd always take more of something than I'd ever actually eat. <laughs> it's the same concept with PMs. Uh, you have to have a reason and a plan because if you don't, you'll just want it all without focus and, uh, well, end up with one hot dog too many. Anyway, here's what I would have done differently if I was starting all over again. Now, first thing I'd change, I'd buy less collectibles and more bullion. I mean, I admit it, I was drawn into the license stuff uh, early on. I thought it'd be a cool grab and uh, worth something down the road. Uh, good example here, Simpson Silver from Tuvalu, I believe. Yeah, it's Tuvalu. But yeah, I mean, Simpsons, really? I love the Simpsons, but did I really need to spend extra on this? Probably not. Um, 
it, it's just it's stuff that I would avoid until after I establish my base stack. Uh, you want to buy practically instead of falling for the marketing. Build up your base goal of ounces first, then you can comfortably branch out. Uh, stuff that I bought early on, some examples. Hard to find Britannias. Luckily, I got a deal on them. I didn't spend too much on them. Here's another one that's pretty tough find. Beautiful, beautiful Britannias. And no milk spotting. Go figure. These are from 2010 and what? 2003, respectively. No damn milk spotting. You get these new, uh, the new Britannias, are, you can have a bowl of cereal with them. Here's another one. Very pricey premium on that one. Crazy. And like this two ounce stuff. Um, you know, this had a huge premium on it. This was $100, so $50 an ounce for a very limited coin. There was only a thousand made of these. But still, it's avoidable. Antique stuff. Really? Do we really need antique stuff? Well, I wanted this one. I liked it. <laughs> but yeah, just you want to be practical when you first start off. And I didn't do that. Next, I'd buy more gold. Look, silver is a fantastic introduction to precious metals, but it's really easy to get top heavy with it uh, due to the availability and the affordability. Uh, I also wouldn't invest as much in a fractional gold uh, under a quarter ounce. I remember one time I was doing an inventory check and that's pretty much when I realized I'd bought way too much, way too many uh, 110 gold bullion coins. Now don't get me wrong, 110s are fantastic and they're an easy way to add gold to your stack one piece at a time. And someday that fractionality could, could be a huge benefit if things go south with the dollar in the economy. But the premiums on them are tough to swallow if you're going strictly for gold weight. I would have been better off just saving the money I spent on 110s and going with a minimum of uh, quarter ounce gold instead. Now my problem, this is, this is definitely a problem. I'm an instant gratification idiot. I like to have something in my hand the minute I pay for it. I hate waiting for gold and silver purchases online. Uh, the weight absolutely drives me crazy. So with that compulsion in mind, this is why I end up buying a bunch of fractional gold at the local level. It was available and in my hand at the moment. Again, there's nothing wrong with owning fractional gold. Uh, I still keep a lot of it. I just wouldn't start off with it if I had to do it all over again. I'd build up a solid base of quarter ounce, half ounce, and full ounces and up. Then I'd go back to smaller fractionals. Another thing I changed, I would stay away from Amazon and other suspect sites. Uh, I bought my first Silver Eagle off Amazon way, way over spot back in the day because of that impetuous part of my personality. Again, I wanted something in my hand quickly and Amazon Prime had the answer with its two-day shipping. Uh, Amazon sellers are pretty much certifiably insane with their ask prices and uh, you rarely find deals on precious metals, rarely. And as far as the other sketchy sites out there like Facebook, God, especially Facebook, they suck. Uh, Etsy and Wish, well, you're only setting yourself up for counterfeits and getting screwed if you go that route. You'd actually be safer buying a used car from the freaking mafia. Look at the size of that trunk. You could put three bodies in there. Just kidding, just trying to levitate the situation. Okay, thank you. Next up, if I could go back, I would hit the 90% stuff hard. Um, I look back to just a few years ago, and I'm reminded of how affordable junk silver was. Uh, I mean, you could pick the stuff up at spot or just above. It was a completely under the radar way of stacking silver, and I ignored it. Nowadays, forget it. Uh, with the occasional great deal to be had um, here and there, it's gonna be off most folks' wish list due to the high premiums on it at the moment. Maybe it'll drop, maybe it won't. Uh, we might already be at a new level of price uh, for this stuff right now. Quite a few LCSs are short on it, and all well, the online dealers are asking uh, for sellers if anybody wants to get rid of it. It's just in demand, and you're really going to have to pay for it now versus just a few years ago. Moving on, diversity. If I could go back in time, I would definitely diversify more because in the beginning, I was way too top heavy in silver, way over the top. And it really gets you thinking when you're setting up your pie charts and you see the percentage disparity between your gold and silver. Uh, it, it looks pretty brutal on paper when you see it. Uh, and storage was becoming an issue. And we all know adding another safe can get expensive, so I liquidated quite a few ounces of silver for gold and got a damn good deal on the process. As you guys who are familiar with the channel know, I traded up for pre-33 gold. Um, and it freed up some space in the safe. 
well, at the time anyway, what it did was only delay the inevitable because now I need another safe anyway. Well played. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely uh, delve more into gold uh, and be careful about how many ounces I stacked of silver. Vaulting services. Ugh. If I go back, I would not consider a vaulting service. I, I admit it. In the beginning, I was buying gold online and using the company's vault service to store my buys. Now, it wasn't a horrible deal because the prices they were selling gold for were, hell, they were actually better than most of the competition and the storage fees were just based on uh, how much was being stored, the amount. But then some lawsuits started creeping in against these companies where buyers were requesting to cash out their metals and have them sent to them, but the companies were never actually buying the metals for their customers in the first place. They were using the money they made for other endeavors. They were just telling customers their metals were being stored and mostly everyone was just okay with that. But when a few wanted to take delivery, well, they were told that the metals mysteriously just weren't available and the companies would settle with their buyers in fiat cash at the original purchase price without refunding any storage fees the customer incurred. There was nothing in the vault but air. <laughs> Remember folks, uh, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And it's the same reason I, I don't use safe deposit boxes at the banks, but that's a video for another time. So those are just some of the things I did wrong as a new stacker. But I'm going to say this. One thing I did right was picking the silver maple as my main stacker back in the day. That was one decision I'm pretty happy with. Um, I have plenty of eagles now, but back then I wanted more bullion for my buck since I was trying to build my uh, base stack. And the maple fit the bill for that. Uh, it was always cheaper than the Eagle and the liquidity for it is just about on the same level as the Eagle. Not quite, but close. Uh, you'll definitely never have a problem selling your maples. Now, I wasn't happy about the milk spotting. None of us are. Because the Royal Canadian Mint didn't care about maples back then. I mean, they never understood why buyers were uh, so ticked off about the issue. Uh, they were just subscribed to the opinion that maples were just bullion and were never meant to be collectibles. Pretty sad state of affairs. <laughs> um, they said it shouldn't matter. But thankfully, the uh, Royal Canadian Mint uh, reversed their stance on that and introduced Mint Shield in 2018. And uh, Maple, since that time, has stayed pretty much spot free. And uh, although it can happen from time to time, but still, I mean, it was a huge step forward in eliminating the spots, and that counts for a lot. I wish some other mints would make the same effort. Looking at you, Royal Mint. Looking at you. Fix my Britannias. All right, there you have it. Those are some of the mistakes I made as a new stacker and what I would change if I could jump in that DeLorean and go back in time. Now look, we all had to start somewhere, right? Uh, we all made our fair share of mistakes. We all overpaid for something and we all bought something we probably shouldn't have. Don't give me that look. Don't, don't give me that look. I know you have something in your stack that you overpaid for. We all have it. Uh, and that's fine. I have no problem stacking for weight and throwing in a little bonus for myself every now and then because it gets boring. How many how many maples can you buy? How many eagles can you buy? Britannias. I want something different every now and then or I'm going to get bored with stacking. Um, it's about more than stacking for SHTF, stacking for your future. It's about having some fun along the way and not taking yourself too seriously as you do it. Have some fun with it. That's why you buy the Bart Simpson coins. Have some fun with it. But anyway, look, be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, you know I love to go through them all and I try to respond to each one. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack. If you made it this far, well, kudos to you. I will definitely catch up with you in the next episode, but in the meantime, yeah, buddy, get yelled at. What do you want to do with your life? Damn right. Get stacked. Stay safe and be well, everyone. I am out of here. Peace, folks. Have a fantastic weekend.